What's going on, guys and gals? It's 8-Bit Ray from the Gorilla Brain Podcast, and you are listening to the Geek World All-Star Podcast Network. Come one, come all, gather round, gather round. Check out the all-new mega Podcastic podcast. These guys are better than paper or plastic. They're absolutely fantastic. What makes these guys fantastic? What makes them fantastic, you ask? Do you like movies? Yeah, I like movies. Do you like television? Yeah, I like television. What about pop culture? Who doesn't like pop culture? Well, you're all in luck because this show is weekly and trust me, I'm not being cheeky. Do they talk about Muppets? Are you kidding? With Crazy Joe involved, you can't stop that guy from talking Muppets. That's not all. There's more. You betcha. Celebrity guests and interviews, just to name a few. Are they famous? Famous? Well, they were nominated three times for a Parsec Award. They won a Parsec Award? No, but it's an honor just to be nominated. How do I find these guys? They can be found at Megapodtastic.com and YouTube.com slash Megapodtastic. Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it, because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people. Right. You want people to care. You want, you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotions. Can you yeah. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally imagine that. <laughs> I'm no sure somebody's written that one too. Pounder with cheese in France? What? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, ale with cheese? Yeah. I can totally imagine. See? I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice up my, my progeny to you, a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> but Neil Adams is somewhere going, hmm? it's, it's my time. Uh... <laughs> How do you measure success? Hey everyone, you're listening to Superhero Speak, and I'm your host Dave. And John. Daddy. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special treat for you this week. Um, and, and those who have been a long time listening to the show know that we used to have another co-host named Ben Fiore, and see him and John had a love child, and then they had a spat over him. And that's what? why Ben Wait. left the show. Uh, yeah, sure. That but, is exactly you know, how it happened. But don't forget the air. <laughs> don't forget the part with the aliens. <laughs> but their child went off. Can't forget the aliens. <laughs> and had his own wonderful show, the Mega Podtastic. And of course, it's the one and only Crazy Joe. How are you, sir? Hey, uh, much like Babs and Buster Bunny, uh, Ben and I are no relation. Oh. It's just a, just a crazy coincidence. And he actually, like, lives by me, I think. I think we're like neighbors. Although I've never actually met him. Huh. Just, <laughs> just look for the beard of knowledge. You'll find it. <laughs> the, the trail of tears. Um. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Uh, cool. So, so, uh, of course, we always catch up with everyone. Um. So we'll start with you, Joe. How are you this week? Oh, <laughs> it's been a real peach of a week. Uh, no, not my finest, but uh, but no, we're all right. All things considered, uh, everything's okay. So yeah, it's it's another week in 2020, the year from hell. So yeah, I hear you. How are you? Me? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm all I'm, of you. Well, well, JD, how are you? You're you're in the middle no. of house of moving right now. I'm literally in the middle of moving right now. We are in the the um, dead zone, we'll say. I'm actually, with the next 10 days, we've been here for a little over a week. We're going to be living on my father-in-law's farm in northern Wisconsin. And I'll tell you something. I love it here. This is fantastic. <laughs> no people? Zero. I've only <laughs> seen family. It's been great. <laughs> Uh-oh. You're going to start a compound, aren't you? Do you, do you think I have the attention span to put together a compound? I don't even like talking to humans. Like, <laughs> no. It depends how many books you're going to write this week. I've already started started a new one. Today. I, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to even feign surprise anymore. <laughs> Just, but but it is an amazing thing to watch. You know, 
And damn it. What's I, that? What's, what? <laughs> hmm? Just, you just, did you drop your microphone? Um, no, it's, you start writing, man. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's so easy, John. Uh huh. But I mean, like, it's like, what's the goal? Is the goal just to write a book, or are you trying to like write the great American novel? Like, I, I don't have those aspirations. I just want to write monster stories. So, War and Peace you know combined with Bocalt's Pendulum and a side of Finnegan's Wake. There you go. You never finished that book. <laughs> yeah, <I know> exactly. <laughs> uh, speaking of wakes, how are you this week, John? Yeah, good. You know, had a restful weekend and uh, um. I finally caught up with uh, Stargirl, and it's it's really really good. So uh, there's nothing, that, literally nothing to report. Wow. Okay. Yeah, nice. Boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, you know, like like the news of 2020. <laughs> uh, at least the comic book news. It's just uh, quiet. You know. <laughs> All quiet on the Western Front. Yeah. So um, so of course you know that we uh. I have I have a fun story. So we're all in uh, quarantine. Things are shut down. Things are starting to open back up in Philly a little bit here and there. Um, but I've always cut my own hair anyway because I just buzz. That it. explains a lot. You can you can cut your own hair. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I, that seems like that's like a that's like a yeah that's like a skill. Like I don't even I couldn't even fathom cutting my own hair. <laughs> well, hold on. So so obviously. I was growing my hair out because I was going to cosplay as Thor, and um, uh, it got to a point where it doesn't seem like, A, I'm not going to reach my fitness goal in time to go cosplay as Thor, and B, it doesn't seem like there's many cons this year anyway. So, I... Um, you got you to look at this more positively. You have more time to reach the there, there you, Thank you. There you go. But also been going on my walks in the morning and it's been so hot and humid i'm like this hair is disgusting so so i decided to cut it off and i normally used a a guard where it's like nine millimeters is the length that leaves when you when you cut it and uh i'm going in and the I'm not paying attention the guard popped off and i left a <laughs> very short square spot on the front of my head <laughs> So I went back and used the shortest one to even it all out. But when you have blonde hair and it's only three millimeters long, your hair, you look bald. So You know, baseball caps are okay to wear with a mask when you go shopping. Oh, I know, but it's just mm-hmm. easier this way. <laughs> I've Probably decided cooler. to pay- Baseball caps, along with the facial mask and the sunglasses, have to be like the hot new celebrity disguise for like. <laughs> yeah, I think that works. So, so yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tell people it was so hot, I just needed a change. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I get it. My hair has reached that point where it's like I need to commit. I either gotta take this off or I gotta go all out and just suffer through it because I, I got this super curly stuff. That man, the humidity hits it, and it's just like boom, as you saw in the video before the show. So yes, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to man up and just grow long hair. Um, you, you know, like, um, like a man. Uh, JD, Redkin yes, out, me. Redkin outshine, just a little bit in your hair, and it keeps the frizz out. Because when my hair gets long, it gets it's curly too, and yeah, that, that makes me survive that. humidity. Well, you have an Irish afro. I'm so. ready to go. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah working out trying. I, yeah, seriously, you put a little bit in here in the morning, and 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 at least at the very least, you've gotten rid of the frizz. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll take that up next time I go into town, go to yeah. the store. Because that's what people come to Superior Speak for: beauty tips, hair, hair care. Well, hair care, yes, for men. <laughs> well, well, speaking of things we appreciate, we appreciate our fans who interact with us on social media. Do we? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Have you read them, Dave? I mean. <laughs> so let's talk a little social media madness. <laughs> uh, so <gasps> I was actually, <laughs> I was actually shocked, um, that this one story got as much, uh, reaction on Twitter as it did. Um, we had talked about, you weren't here last week, JD, but we talked about Evil Dead. The new one, uh, which will be called Evil Dead Rising and won't feature Bruce Campbell. Um, 
What's the point? Sorry. <laughs> that's why that's I said last week, so I had to get my two cents yeah, in. Yeah, that, 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 that was my point, too. It's like, it, he makes the movie, so what is the point? Um, well, yeah, but again, he's getting old. They, they, the, t- the TV show or the, the series that they finished only a couple of years ago, I think that was his swan song. So, you know. So I'm still shocked we got that. I didn't. Ex- I never thought we'd get something like that ever. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. That this is true. When they announced it and actually came to light, it was like, oh, okay. Well, Bruce Campbell. Well, our good friend, uh, Random Randy Savage said, uh, I still haven't seen the updated Evil Dead. It's on my list. Uh, I haven't seen the new one either, um, though. I mean, I heard it's more horror than mm-hmm. anything. Meh. Meh. It is. I mean, they try to do some of the humor things, but I mean, like, uh, I forget the character's name. I think her name is Mia. Eh, it just it just doesn't have the same. It just doesn't quite hit the same. Like you don't have that. You know, Sam Raimi had that like affinity for the Stooges that always comes off in his horror yeah. movies. And it yeah. just didn't. It just didn't quite have it. Like it just it came off like another zombie movie. It, didn't, it felt like someone doing an impression of an Evil Dead movie. Right. Which it was. Which is it was. So. Hmm. I guess. I guess mission accomplished. <laughs> Uh, D squared brothers Volsker, uh, said, as much as I love Campbell, I'm okay with this. It isn't a reboot, but a possible repassing the torch, or maybe they can, I think he meant leave off, where the show ended. He did say that he is out of this one, so he may be back. And from what I read, Ramey and Campbell selected the director and writer. Um, yeah, but again, not to be nitpicky, but if re, wouldn't, wouldn't repassing the torch just be giving it back to Bruce Campbell? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is true. See, I, I always call that an unboot. You know, you reboot <laughs> it, and they're like, "Oh, now we're bringing back the old continuity." Oh, you're unbooting it. Okay. I like that unbooting. I like that. Uh, Interesting. Ghosts in the Stratosphere said, "I thought the remake was pretty good. The franchise doesn't need him, but in parentheses, but it is better with him." <laughs> no. Hey, it, it just occurred to me that the new Ghostbusters movie is an unboot. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yes. you're right. That is probably the best example of one. Huh. Sorry, that just crossed my mind. Uh, we, have a, we have uh, Mike <laughs> Featherson, who's a new <clears throat> commenter. Mike Featherstowe4 on Twitter. Um, then it's not and then it's not an Evil Dead movie, just a sad attempt to cash in. Well, even with Bruce Campbell, it's just a sad attempt to cash in. Well, that's true. But but at least at least then you have something to laugh at and I agree. enjoy. Uh, Teak Lore, who's <laughs> at Teak <laughs> underscore Lore, said, "Woke Dead dot 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 the sucking." Ooh. Okay. I don't. I, uh, I, I, I. That's making assumptions about something before there's even you know. Uh, one frame shot, I think. Um, are you, are you, t- are you, Dave, are you trying to tell me someone's making a judgment on a film that hasn't been made on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. The, the hell? You say? I thought such things were done to Rotten Tomatoes. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Abby Normal, who's at cat underscore woman 13 said, no Bruce Campbell, what's the point? Hmm. A fair assessment. And Eddie, Ber- Birkins, uh, who's at fo- I can't, F-O-H-N-S do- Dorfer. You know, you know, you know who you are if you're listening. Yes, yes. Uh, m- gave us a gif of, uh, Bruce going, my evil mistress. <laughs> so, and then. He's a, the man's a genius. And then finally, John McCubbin said, not groovy. <laughs> <laughs> So Why don't they one. just make Evil Dead the musical? Just just turn that into a movie. No, oh my goodness. give them the idea. It's so oh, good, though. Thing. It's like, so it good. good. Yeah. I had a blast when I went. Yeah, get the original Broadway or off-Broadway cast. Give them, you know, you make it dirt cheap. I, I, I'd rather see that than a remake. Yeah. Hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Um. So, so we also had talked about, not that long ago, the... Uh, Michael Keaton is returning. It will, it will, it will put that in quotes uh, for now uh, as Batman to the DCEU, though it's not called the DCEU anymore. Um, 
And uh, of course, we had talked about is he going to be playing Thomas Wayne or, or Bruce Wayne? And uh, Shadow Walker, who never has anything good to say, uh, said they already confirmed it. It be Michael Keaton as Bruce, no Thomas. Um, I didn't see Shadow that anywhere. Be incorrect. Nothing is confirmed. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, did did and Joe? You maybe you've seen something that have they confirmed what version of Batman he is? Everything I have read says he'll be playing Bruce Wayne. However, I haven't read anything to indicate that that means Thomas Wayne is off the table. There, there's mm-hmm. nothing to say Thomas Wayne can't be in there as well. I, I, I haven't read, I haven't read that that he's that Thomas Wayne's been eliminated. But okay. but I have heard that Michael Keaton is supposed to be Bruce Wayne again. You didn't read it on We Got This Cover, right? No. <laughs> okay. We got this covered. Is that's only there for toilet paper? You know, it's, <laughs> keep same I keep with trying cosmic, to cosmic cosmic book news. Considering cosmic it's a book, book news. Yeah. I keep considering it's a website. It's kind of hard to use it for toilet paper. But. Yeah, you know, you can accomplish anything if you put your mind to it. <laughs> I keep trying to tell old D squared not to tweet that stuff because that that website is cockamamie. Yeah, even I don't believe that stuff, and I'll tweet anything. It's true. Hmm. So it is, yes. <laughs> so, so Randy uh, gave his own um, idea for the movie. Uh, while DCEU Flash is chasing the Reverse Flash, he goes into the multiverse, bumping into himself, the past and the future. So in the future, he sees Batman, Keaton, and his new ward Terry, and they redo that scene in Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're starting rumors again. Uh, I don't. <laughs> That's okay. We're better mm. than we got discovered. <laughs> Anything to take a bunch. I mean, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not uh, upset with that idea. Oh, getting back to uh, like things that have been said. Like, I haven't seen anything concrete. I've seen theories that um, this move will erase. Everything um, in the Batman universe past uh, Batman Returns. So Batman Forever and Batman and Robin won't exist in, anymore in Keaton's continuity. And uh, I read that too, but I don't think it's necessary. Like, I don't like those movies, but you just, you, I don't know. Yeah. You just don't have to reference them, you, you know, but... Just, just don't have Mike. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jim Carrey show up, and we're all good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh. those, movies, those movies feel like a different universe anyway. They could just ignore them and pretend like it happened because this is kind of what we're on, right? Everything's a multiverse now. Yeah. They could just easily toss out that those happen in Earth one thirty four or whatnot, you know. Earth Schumacher. Earth, Earth Schumacher. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Uh, well, like, like, they, like I said before, that's what they're doing with the animated stories now. They're just like, you know, it, it, it looks like at the ever, at the end of every one, they're going to make, okay, Flash, go back and retry it. <laughs> um, all right. And then finally, we had also talked about Henry Cavill, uh, is apparently still contracted to play Superman and said in a recent interview, he wants to keep playing him as long as he can, as long as he's allowed to. And, uh, of course, um, a lot of people like him. Uh, Paul Branson, who's at Terminal Hamster, uh, said, good actor who's been in <laughs> so, 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 so movies as Superman. I'm fine with him getting to pay, it's play the role. He, he put pay, play the role again. Just give him a movie worth his time. And, uh, Selena Hernandez, who's at Chi, Clean, uh, whatever. Uh, you know who you are. Um, let him be the man of steel and gave us a gif of him saying, sup. <laughs> and Project Impact Comic said, give him a s- proper script that allows him to play the character we know, Superman, to be, and I'll be fine with it. So, yeah. Fair enough. I, I mean, that's the thing. I've been saying this, like, people like him. He is a decent actor. It's, it's the, the writing that they didn't like. Yeah, I I didn't think he was a good Superman at all until I saw Justice League. And then it's like the end of Justice League when he came back. I'm like, oh, no, this guy can play Superman. Zack Snyder just wasn't writing Superman. He was writing 
mopey man who flies or whatever. You <laughs> yeah. Mopey man. <laughs> I mean, and he, even then, I'm like, I, I'm not even sure what you mean by like the end of Justice League because I don't even think any part of that movie was redeemable. But again, like the guys turned me on to the fact that um, he's, Henry Cavill's played other parts and was good in them and seems to have a range. So, you know, I, I would like to see him with a good script if he's going to continue on. Cause otherwise, again, as with like, uh, Evil Dead without Bruce Campbell, what's the point? The cast of Man of Steel wasn't the problem of Man of Steel. Or was right. the problem with Man of Steel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, if you want to know how you can follow along, with us on social media and be part of Social Media Madness. Here's our good friend D-Square to tell you more. Enjoying the show? Want to be part of Social Media Madness? Make sure you are following SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter at Superhero Speak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. The Geek World All-Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Colt 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, The Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. Alright, thank you for that, Don. And, while we're at it... Joe, before we forget, before we go on our commercial break, uh, why don't you tell the people where they can find Megapod Testing? Well, you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash megapodtastic. And you can find us wherever you get podcasts. Uh, the, the, the YouTube version is up on YouTube. Then we got the podcast, the audio podcast, and that is uh, anywhere you get, get your podcasts, whether it be Apple or Stitcher or you name it. And and the podcast is now called the All New Megapodtastic Podcast because I took over 300 episodes and trashed them and said we're starting from scratch. Would you replace sugar with sucralose wow. too, or something? Or? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we took the Pepsi challenge and decided to change our formula. Mm. <laughs> that might not have been a good idea. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, boys and girls, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right, let's talk some news. There isn't a whole lot of news to talk about, but um, but I know we all can't shut up, so this should be good. Um, starting off with Janelle <laughs> Moreau. Is that how you say her name? Janelle um, Monet. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good try, Dave. Good try. Um, has uh has put her foot into the uh, casting ring and would like to play Storm in the upcoming Black Panther two, and uh because there are rumors that she will be featured in that film, and uh, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Um, I've only seen her in Hidden Figures, and she was decent in that movie, so I have no issues with this. But uh, what do you guys think? She looks the part. She's got good screen presence. She seems talented. I'm okay with this. Yeah, we'd we'd have to see. Like, it, some sometimes it takes somebody new on the field to come in and do a part right, you know. And and besides, if this is going to be a um, Marvel deal, I'm sure if they cast her, then that she's got, you know, that that she'll do it right. At, at least we know the direction will be good, probably. Yeah, Cougar. Right. Cougar coming back. What, what do you I've mean? never heard of her before. No? I don't know who she is, but I don't know. she's good. Okay. <laughs> so I guess you haven't seen yeah, the there's... movie Hidden Figures. I have not. Okay. I have not. But but I'll tell you, I I hate to lose the current cast because I think like like Alexandra Ship has been 
Storm in the last couple movies, and I think they're all good. I think they're all really, really good. So I, I, I don't know. It feels like Feige likes to reboot things, so he's going to reboot it all. But I don't, I don't really think it's necessary. I, I think you could just take those guys and incorporate them. Um, I did see something about, uh, I want to say, an hour and a half ago that popped up online, and I don't know if it's true or not. But apparently, rumors are that she's already in talks with Coogler as well. So. Mm. Well, and it's possible they may integrate or at least pay uh, homage to some of the old char- uh, Fox characters because multiverse of madness, right? Like anything's well, possible at this point. We they- do know for a fact it has been confirmed that Kevin Feige had conversations with Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. about returning as Professor X. So, if they're rebooting X Men, the what else could that be but multiverse of madness? I can't think uh, of it anywhere else that would fit. Yeah, no, I agree. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with that movie. Here's something I find interesting. The whole Storm Black Panther thing, as I recall, like I think it was 06 or 07 when that happened, Uh it seemed like a lot of comic fans didn't like it, felt the pairing was forced. But I think in a window of time, it seems that a lot of like younger fans, people like my age and younger, really kind of dug that pairing. Because they they see a lot of stuff on Twitter, especially like, I hate to use the phrase shipping because I'm too old for it, but I think that that (laughs) It seems that that particular pairing has a lot of resonance. I mean, honestly, like a lot of my friends that I follow on Twitter, you know, they're black, really enjoyed the Storm Black Panther thing. So I I could see this actually working, like just bringing that pairing back to the uh, back to uh, prominence, if you will. I'm well, interested. I, well, I'm an anime fan, so I can use the word ship, and um, <laughs> I I. I, you're I, you know, I, older I, than me. You're the oldest one here, John. <laughs> I am, but I'm an anime fan. That gives me a pass. So I, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I'd ship that. that off, off the, off the cuff, knowing like the temperament and, and the backstories of the two characters, it doesn't. I, I mean, it doesn't seem like there'd be a whole lot in common there to build a relationship on. And that was what the argument was right. when it first happened. But like I said, mm. in retro, in retrospect, like now that it's kind of in. In the purview, um, a lot of fans seem to really like it and hold it in high regard. It's one of those things where, at the time, maybe it didn't work quite as well, but when you look back on it, people are kind of like, you know, it was actually pretty good. So, Mm -hmm. curious to see where it goes from here. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll see. I mean, they can bring her in and not have them have a relationship, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can. They can, but I think there's a, there's, I think there is a segment of fandom that really enjoys the relationship because it's a, it's a power. Or couple, it's a black power couple, which you don't really see a lot in comics, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, just having had some conversations with people, that that's kind of the vibe I got. So, I don't know, it's interesting to me. Alright, well we'll see, we'll see. Um, speaking of Marvel and moving forward with their movies, uh, it has been confirmed that Chang chi will resume production this month in Australia. So, uh, apparently things are getting back to normal in Australia. So, they'll be able to, to, uh, record. Um, are we still excited for this movie, guys? I am. I think I, I am. I can't too. wait. Yeah. I, I was never excited for this one. I'll, I'll go see, <laughs> I'll go see anything they put out because I trust, I trust Kevin Feige. They really haven't let me down yet. Mm. I mean, possibly Thor 2, but I still argue, I still argue Thor 2 is a good movie. It's just the worst of 20 good movies. But, um. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. But I'll, I'll, so I'll see anything, but I'm, I'm not excited. <laughs> alright, alright. I have to ask. Thor 2 or Iron Man 3? Well, I, I think, I think Thor 2 is the worst, but I think Iron Man 3 is one of the best. Yeah, I'm, I just actually rewatched Iron Man 3. It was on over the weekend, and, uh, it was uh I I don't know I I it's not as bad as I th- as I re- thought I remembered it like I think it was pretty good the only the only the only part I still have a problem with is um you know let's destroy all my suits even though like you know because that obviously didn't last for more than two days before he started rebuilding them <laughs> but but otherwise it was I I I liked it a whole lot better I guess the second showing I don't know I, was... I fucking hate Iron Man three oh wow I, I love that. Okay. <laughs> Again, wow. as I said when we – now, you weren't on the show then, J.D., but as I said when we reviewed the movie originally, I enjoyed it for what it was because I liked the twists that you didn't see coming. I understand why people were mad about it, 
Oh yeah, because of the ten, because of was his what's the his Mandarin. name? Um, Mandarin. Mandarin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, jeez. But like, yeah. when the twist came, I was like, oh, that's clever. Like, I see what you did there, Feige. Oh, I remember when Iron Man three came out. It was the same summer. The same summer as Star Trek Into Darkness. <laughs> and to me, they were the two movies that you used to just to display how to do a twist right and how to do a twist wrong. Because no one saw the twist coming in Iron Man 3. It was a genuine shocker. But then everyone, when you watch uh, Into Darkness and he goes, I am Khan. Everyone's like, yeah, well, yeah, duh. We knew yeah, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People figured that out when he got cast. Yeah. But, like, him. What a twist. No, I don't like Iron Man 3. <laughs> well, to each his own. <laughs> I've done the diatribe on the show before, and I, I won't do it now. No. Yeah, you, that's I don't fine. like it. Yeah. Uh, only, only, maybe at the end if we need to pad. Uh, <laughs> I can do it, but I can pad. Uh, all right, so let's move across the aisle then to DC, and uh, our good friend Zack Snyder, he has come out and said <sighs> that his Justice League movie will feature zero studio compromises. Um, he gave That's a list. Great. He gave a list of the things. Uh, the original stem design will return. Uh, he's already deep in effects work on the film. The upcoming release of Justice League will be 100%. His vision, with absolutely no compromises, uh, will likely get a new teaser before the upcoming DC fandom on August 22nd. Uh, Donkey XL will return to score the film. Justice League will include more nightmare sequences with Darkseed and Superman. And Kevin Costner will likely return as Jonathan Kent for a brief cameo. Good. It'll be even darker and more tasteless than I thought um, it was going to be. Well, I was going to say, like, oh, that's going to happen. Uh, he, he, he showed up more since he died <laughs> than he was alive in, in Man of Steel. Uh, mm, this is all right, true. All right. I'm going to ask Sit Joe because we've been, ta- we've talked about the Snyder cut back and forth quite a few times. I'm, I'm curious, what is your take on all of this? I think the Snyder Cut should be buried deep in a hole <laughs> and, and never looked at. I, I don't understand. I just do not for the life of me understand why this is a thing. Uh, we got the Whedon Cut because Warner Brothers watched the Snyder Cut and declared it unwatchable. Uh, Justice League bombed at the box office not because of what it was, because nobody went to see it. You can't have an opinion on it if you didn't see it. Opening weekend of Batman v Superman, people went to see it. They didn't like it, and mm-hmm. it sunk like a stone in subsequent weeks. Justice League never opened. That was a uh, that was because of Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. People were like, "No, you got us twice. You're not getting us a third time." So he sunk that movie even when it wasn't his cut, because it was a repudiation. People were like, I don't want more of this garbage. So how does he get, uh, like, a 700, uh, how much are they spending? Is it what, 70 million? Or what, what, what did they say? 100 million? I don't know. They're putting all this money to complete a, a, a version of the movie that we've heard is unwatchable. I don't know. Who, this guy must have pictures of someone at Warner Bros. with a goat <laughs> to get this kind of treatment. This is this is true. Like I can't, I can't. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous that they will continue to fund. Like they won't fund good things that are out there, but they will fund this sinking ship. And 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 the as far as uh, Justice League was concerned, um, I I know that uh, I know I know that um, Snyder left because his twenty year old daughter passed away. Which I'm sorry to hear, um, but even even with jo- jo- putting Joss Whedon on, it was like putting a bandaid on an amputated arm. It's like it was not going to stop the bleeding. There was well, there was no well, that's nobody. The thing. N- nobody I think Joss stop. Whedon made a brilliant movie. I love Justice League. It is one of my favorite superhero movies. But it's pure Whedon. You watch that movie, start to finish, it's pure Whedon. The dialogue is so Whedon. The action scenes are shot just like the scenes in Avengers where you follow one character, then cut to the other. Then I'm like, I'm like, I don't even see any of what Zack Snyder did here. I think Whedon basically reshot that movie from the ground up. Mm, I, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Um, there were too many stupid lines, too many uh, continuity errors, and too many. To, too too much of of what we've always come to expect from from Snyder, which is probably why they had to do extensive reshoots. But even with that, they still couldn't mask the fact that it is basically, oh, 
this would be a cool scene. This would be a cool scene. This would be a cool scene. Now stick them together with the, 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 the thinnest sinew you could find, you know, like just however you can string those together, just do it. It doesn't matter if it makes no sense whatsoever. We'll just have really cool scenes though. Well, that was, I didn't hate just, I didn't hate Justice League. I thought it was not great. I thought it was very, very mediocre. I think the problem with Justice League is that it does feel like a Whedon movie at some times, but it looks like a Snyder movie. Like I would, yeah. I remember we reviewed it. I attributed it to these, superhero version of the uh, of the Steven Spielberg film AI, which was started by Stanley Kubrick, finished by Steven Spielberg, and feels like this weird hodgepodge that it's neither anyone's movie. And that's how I feel about Justice League. Like it's kind of it's got it's got Snyder's fingerprints all over it, but it 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 sounds like a Whedon movie, but it isn't really. It just it's this weird hodgepodge of two different filmmakers' visions that. I think have a hard time meshing together. And the answer of why they're doing this is they're not putting a whole lot of money in it, really. And they're banking enough people trying it to jump by the HBO max. They need a gimmick. Mm. Yeah. It's concerning the disappointing lineup on HBO max. Oh they, God. They I, hate, I hate HBO max. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's not been much of a, success and they don't have like a the problem that people launching these streaming networks is they need original content and there's not enough of it so hbo warner's like hey we gotta do something let's uh, this, this seems like a 70 million dollar we told you so experiment from warner brothers mm. well that which <laughs> basically is just like dc universe was it, you know i mean like yeah. it's still around but it's uh, they, and now they're splitting the content between dc universe whatever netflix still has licenses for and um, whatever W was was the Warner streaming service, whatever the CW. hell that is. Oh, and, yeah. And, and now, and now, um, HBO max, it's like, it, it, you're, you're, you're exactly right there. We've gotten to a point where they're all, everybody's trying to do their own streaming service and there's not, an, nobody has enough content to do it themselves with the exception of the 8,000 pound mouse in the room. So- well, I, I disagree with you there. I think uh, Warner Brothers, part of the reason I hate HBO Max is because I believe Warner Brothers is the only ones who have enough content to take on Disney, but none of it's on there. Mm, uh, the the yeah, first day true. I got HBO Max, I was like, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be this repository of every classic Warner Brothers movie and TV series and sitcom. I'm like, I bet Night Court's going to be on there. I bet I'm going to be able to watch... Jabberjaw cartoons with my daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. None of it is on there. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck, man? Wait, wait. And people are like, oh, give them time. It'll come in time. I'm like, give Disney Plus had this stuff on day one. They didn't have everything. I'm still bitter the Muppet Show isn't there, but they had most of it. <laughs> no, and I think that problem is Warner forced out HBO Max before it was ready. Like, they're trying to push it so soon, they didn't wait for their deals and everything to expire. You know, they thought Friends was going to be their big hook, and it really it hasn't been. So they need they need, need something. It's like when Peacock launches later this month. Like, there's not enough people. There's only so much nickel and dime you can do with people. Oh, and Peacock's even weirder because they're sharing content. I don't know if you read this. This was in the news this week. They yeah. struck a deal to share content with CBS All Access. So if you're paying for CBS All Access <laughs> and you're paying for Peacock, they're sharing the same content. Mm. Yeah. It's... It's weird. It's like why leave Hulu if well, your plan was just to share content anyway. Since for since for all and you get and you get, and you get Hulu half price or at a huge discount when you get Disney. Since for on yeah. um, streaming services, uh, I forgot to include this. My son mentioned it to me um, after I sent the email uh, that apparently um, Stargirl has gotten renewed for season two. And it'll be exclusively Good. on the CW. It will no longer be yes. on DC. Yeah, Universe. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. I heard about that. So, right. is that the sign that that app is going away? I, I yes. hope not, so, because the best thing about DC Universe is that it gives you access to almost like every digital comic they've ever had. I yeah. I, I think if the streaming side of it goes away, I hope it at least sticks around for the comics as like the, the DC equivalent to what, what Marvel uh, unlimited is. Right. Doesn't it seem like they've like it, they've um, bad decisioned this to death though. It's, yes. it, I, it's like yes. decision after decision they've made has been basically to drive a stake into its heart. Like, you know, it, it, it could have been so good. It could have had everything 
you know, everything, all the DC content in, in one place. And they, they, I, for whatever reason, they've like spread it across like eight different streaming services and, and, uh, two, ne- three networks. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, like you said, we, we get a boomerang, which has all those old cartoon networks. I pay or those old cartoon shows. Like I pay three bucks a month for boomerang because the kid loves Scooby Doo. Like, mm. so you've had deals with them. You can't just say, well, your three dollar boomerang subscription is rolled over into HBO Max. Now you owe me nine dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like they had this wasn't well thought out. Like they could have phased out these other things, then launched HBO Max. Yeah, they didn't. They're trying to have their cake and push it all over their faces too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nuts. Things are such a mess at Warner Brothers, and apparently on the set of uh, Justice League, <laughs> um, we're now getting one of the biggest he said, she said battles I've seen in a long time. Uh, so we talked about Ray Fisher uh, had said at Comic-Con that he had supported the decision to use Josh Whedon, and then he tweeted out that he uh, aggressively retracts that statement. Uh, he has then come out and now said that Josh Whedon was extremely unprofessional and uh, uh, abused people on set uh, during the filming. Uh, Kevin Smith has even kind of backed this up, saying some of the crew that worked on Justice League, he's worked with on other projects, and they said that Whedon was abusive to them, uh, that they, uh, whenever they would do something like Zach would have won it. He like yelled at them and it's like, no, you know, do it this way, that kind of a thing. And, uh, and now Ray Fisher has come out and said that the reason he can't give more details about what happened is because of the NDA that he signed with Warner brothers, um, while making the film. So, I mean, this is nuts. Like my question is what's the gain from him coming out and saying any of this stuff right now? Like, what do you guys think his, his motivation is? For this, I I don't know. I think it makes him look unprofessional. I, unless you can back it up, and he's saying he can't back it up, you're just coming out and trashing a director you worked with. If I'm a director, I don't want to work with you now. Mm. Yeah. What? So, oh, some of the shine came off Joss Whedon, the Joss Whedon Rose, a few years ago when, because um, in the '90s, his whole brand was built around you know being an advocate for girl power, and it was really you know they had some of those things a couple years ago. The guy released that he was you know kind of using his position to um, not force, but just, you know, kind of mm, using the power position to kind of get over with some women. And like, it seems like since those, um, since that stuff's come to light, Wheaton has kind of fallen out of favor with a lot of people. And I wasn't terribly surprised to hear these things. Uh, but I do agree. Like if you sign an NDA, you can't say anything. And I, part of me is like, is this a, uh, is he just doing this to kind of rally people to the new cut of the Justice League movie? It's weird. Even if the, even if these things did happen, it, it coming out now and they're hyping up this new movie is super, super. So I don't know, man. And I believe Kevin Smith, and he says he's heard the same stories. But you know, there's a lot of like there's a lot of directors that are assholes on sets of movies. You know? Yeah. Right. Right. My. Uh, Oh, so I got a, I got a good one. The, in, in, like, uh, the, the guy I do my my story builder podcast with, uh, he was an he was an assistant director on a movie with large robots. We'll leave it at that. And he had to return the director's <laughs> rental car to uh, you know Enterprise or whatever. And the, his biggest concern was cleaning off all the cocaine and making oh, sure Jesus. that if he got pulled over, <laughs> he wouldn't get in trouble. Like that was he said. I've never been more terrified than driving this dude whose name well, I will not name. It's car around, you know? So, I mean, like, and the, he said the guy's a complete asshole, but he well, gets what ex- he wants in Hollywood. Uh, well, that explains... So, I mean, the, like... <laughs> that, that explains the sequel to that um, movie with the giant robots. <laughs> I never said there was I never said there was a sequel involved in that. You're oh, implying okay. things that I've I think there were a lot of sequels with that movie. Um, <laughs> See, I just assume you're talking about that asylum film, The Transmorphers. <laughs> <laughs> No, they I, strangely enough, they're the same ones. <laughs> I was trying to put you guys off the scent of robot jacks. <laughs> oh, 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 is that is that it? Oh no, no not Gary Graham. Graham. <laughs> no, I'm not, I was sub, subterfuge, man, subterfuge. No, but I mean that's like I, th- I think it explains why some he of these likes guys are dicks, especially got the right. I said I think it explains why he likes explosions so much. Uh, mm. So. They, uh, <laughs> 
I, I know, I know. We have no idea. Nope, nope, none at all. But what were we gonna say, uh, John? Well, you oh. heard it here, folks. If you're <laughs> first, folks, Guillermo <laughs> del Toro is a cokehead and <laughs> caused a lot of problems like the set of Pacific Rim. Dude, have you seen Guillermo <laughs> del Toro? Whatever his name is, that that the, his movies? Of course, he's on. He's on something. <laughs> There's no way he's, he's not on, on something. I think he's on peyote. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That dude's yeah. on another level. Have you seen Pan's Labyrinth? <laughs> I mean, it just... Oh my god, yes. It's like, you you couldn't have made that movie unless you were high. Yeah. Hol- Hol- Holmey made a, love, he made a love story film with a girl and a creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah. I about know. That. <laughs> uh, uh. Instead of making Hellboy 3. Well, that's Mignola's fault. Yeah. Mm. Oh. All right. All right. Uh... Move along. Moving along. Moving along. All right. All right. Whew. So, um, of course, this isn't really huge news. It's not surprising to anyone. But in case you haven't heard, uh, Dragon Con has been officially canceled for 2020. Uh, first time in 35 years. So, yeah. yeah. They're, they're going to cancel New York soon, too, probably. So, uh, yeah. I, well, I was going to get to that in a second. Um, what's, well, cause it's interesting because they're, Initially, they were going to try to go on, but they weren't going to have the parade, which is a big thing in Dragon Con. And, uh, of course, they were going to force social distancing and not allow the hotels to be a capacity. But, um, yeah, they've, they've decided that it's just best to cancel it. Uh, for those who are uh, <laughs> following along at home, New York Comic Con is the only big convention that hasn't been officially canceled yet for 2020. Um, however... Uh, those of us who are in the press all got emails today and also people who get pro badges, uh, got these as well saying that, uh, the deadline for them to make their decision has moved to the end of July, which mm-hmm. normally we would have gotten a yay or nay at this point. Um, and so everyone's guess at this point is that they're mulling over canceling it or not. And that's why they haven't made any decisions. And, uh, Here- there is literally no way on the uh, in the entire world that they are going to stick 280,000 people from literally all over the planet all together in a in in a couple of large halls. Well, there's there's just no way. Here's the other thing I noticed: like, go to their website. There are no guests announced yet. Yeah, and by so, now they've they've usually announced at least half of them. Right. So my guess is no one wants to do it either. Mm. So you can't have a con without guests. Yeah, if you can't book Virgil from the WWE <laughs> and you're in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so yeah, um, hopefully we'll hear soon. I That's you know, uh, Joey from uh, So Wizard Podcast basically, we, we, him and I were talking about it. He's like, look, I know that it's going to be canceled. Just, just announce it already. Like, stop playing around. You know, like it's so obvious at this point. You're not even gonna get any Power Rangers at the, at this point. It's like, <laughs> uh, you can't have a con with Tommy. Them. Will come. Tommy needs to get paid. Mm. That's <laughs> true. Tommy's always there. You know. Yeah. Tommy, but he might show I, up even if there isn't a con. <laughs> I, yeah, I bet you would still get the professional cosplayers though. They they can't say no. I don't think they're. I don't think they have it in them. Well, that's so because they can put level three hazmat suits underneath <laughs> un- underneath their their cosplay. So you're you know? saying in, in in the beginning of October there will be um, Tommy and a bunch of cosplayers standing outside of the Jacob Javits Center, going, <laughs> "This is our con." And Virgil. And Virgil. See, I, I I've always sauce. said I've always said I don't understand why cons let professional cosplayers in for free because they have to go. Like they yeah. have to. Yeah. Like where else in a professional cosplay at the Wawa? They have to go. <laughs> well, they, they could they could cosplay as um as some of the characters from Andromeda Strain. <laughs> oh. There you go. Too soon. <laughs> all right, all right. So so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll let you guys know as soon as we know. I, I have a feeling we're gonna know soon. Um. All right. So there isn't a lot of news. So I thought we could have a little fun this week. Uh, we love talking rumors on the show. Uh, we want to be the new We Got This Covered. Uh, <laughs> um, so let's start with the the one that I added last minute. Um, Tron 3, apparently rumored, 
uh, is in the works with Jarrett Leto to star. Um, and now there was some, one of the, one of the, someone from Disney no. did make an announcement, uh, not that long ago that he feels that the audience is ready for another Tron movie. No. Um, sorry. No. No. Um, uh, Sean, nope. what do you think about Tron 3? Nope. <laughs> At, seeing as how I was one of the lucky people to be a, you know, getting on in my ancient years now and to have seen the original Tron in the theater, um, and, you and anxiously awaited, anxiously awaited the second Tron movie, saw the Tron 2 trailer, um, I forget where, what, what convention it was in at the time and, and thought, you know, we're saved. It'll be great. And then saw that movie in the theater and came away incredibly disappointed. Disney does not have what it takes to do that movie justice. They like the Marvel side does great with the Marvel movies, but they, but they, the executives at Disney just do not understand what the original draw of Tron was, the original vision of it. They just don't get it. They are not, there's no way they can make a good Tron movie. See, on the other side of that, I was ready for Tron 3 the second I walked out of the theater of Tron Legacy, <laughs> which I saw in the movies five times. Um, and my common refrain every time a new Disney live action remake is announced is, can't we just please have Tron 3 now instead? So I'm you ready like for this, Tron? even if it has to star Jared Leto, which I'll admit I'm not entirely thrilled with but you know what heck i'll take it i'll take anything i could get feed me some tron man i are you like tron too i i love both of them i absolutely love both of them i mm, i was mm, eh. it didn't it it didn't it did not gel for me at all i mean the 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 point of the original was that um it, it was i back then computers were like pretty new and most people didn't know, you know, word one about them. So it was interesting to get a visualization of what was going on inside them. The second one had so much possibility and they basically like did a dark, like they did, they did like a justice, like a dark version of it, you know? And it's, it was, it wasn't colorful. It was just, it was just all black on, you know, neon lights and that was it. They didn't get the reason or the the stylistic part of it right, even as far as I'm concerned. I, I just there there's so much more they could do with it, given the advances in technology. And I'm not just saying about the CGI. I'm talking about the the storyline. The storylines they could do, given how things work today and the the amount of technology we have. And I I don't think there's anybody in Disney who will be able to take that vision and do it properly. Um. Yeah. I I don't know if I. <laughs> I don't know if I fully agree with that. Um, so Steve Lisberger, who's the original writer and director of Tron, um, considered himself a futurist and it was part of the inspiration for Tron. And like one of the key things people miss in that movie is the identity discs. Like his whole, the whole thing about the movie is that there would be a digital version of people that live in these computers, uh, in the future and, we are already kind of there. Um, so that's like, it was his message about like where the, the future was headed. Um, but the technology to tell that story wasn't there in what was it? 82 or 83 when that movie came out. And the whole point was to compete with star Wars and it, it, it failed, but it became a cult classic after that. I think Tron legacy, the tech was there. And I think visually it lived up to the promise of the first one, but I, yeah, I didn't like the story as much. So, so I'm kind of curious, like third time's a charm, I think. <laughs> see, I, I was all in on the story. In fact, I want to see where, where it's going because they left it off with, uh, with Cora coming into the real world. And I, I want to, I want to see where that goes. Yeah. How about you, JD? I've never seen either movie. Ah! You call yourself a nerd. I'm very nerdy. We all have the, we all have our nerd touchstones. We just haven't. I got nothing. I never saw it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, that's your homework. I know the first one is at least on, on Disney Plus. Oh, they are both on Disney okay. Plus. Well, there you go. There, there may have been some, there may have been some, some nights sitting in front of the Disney Plus with the, 
<laughs> oh yeah. It's bio digital jazz, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Well then let's 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 move on to to rumors related to stuff that I know JD has seen. Um, yeah, J, J, JD, just remember one thing. JD, just remember when you watch the original, just remember that as you're watching it, they they actually hand did the um the the neon overlay on every single frame of that film. Like that was that was not there were the effects, the CGI and everything did not exist in that time. They hand did that whole movie. But by the you're way. Where, as far as the effects in the original Tron, I always hear people say they're dated. I disagree. I don't yeah. think they're dated because if they were inside a computer in 1982. Uh, I mean, come on. It looks like technology from 1982. So therefore, it's a period piece. Ooh, I, I, I like still that. think it, it's, I still think that the, the, um, the, uh, the visuals though are still as striking today as they were back then. Like it lo- doesn't look like any other movie out there. Oh yeah, yeah. The only thing that even comes close is Auto Man, and that was copyright. Right. Who remembers Auto Man? Oh <laughs> I have the series on DVD. Oh yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, we're all dating ourselves. Well, uh, I want to take this time to I want to take this time to thank John for explaining to me that they didn't have CGI in 1982, forgetting that I had a <laughs> film degree. Oh, oh, so, oh, 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 right, right. right. I, I appreciate that. The heads it, up, or I, for I did not know that CGI did not exist. In okay. Well, the, the the point was though that it was such a <laughs> such a marvel that they hand did every every frame. Like it, I can't imagine like the work that went into that. You know, like I thought you might appreciate that. All right. I did. I, know I would that. also real quick recommend that everybody watch the episode of Tron from the prop culture on Disney Plus, where they go back and find the original uh, Tron props. You're stepping mm. on my recommendation for later on in the episode. Uh, oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, moving on to movies and characters that JD knows, I think uh, this rumor has not died. And I keep seeing more people, more people talking about it. Uh, Ben Affleck is in talks to reprise Batman for a secret HBO Max project. Um, <laughs> that is got this cover cosmic book newsy. That is <laughs> like, you're talking weekly world news, underground lizard people. <laughs> Bat- Bat- the Bat- Foundation. Like, this rumor originates. This rumor originates on a site far, far, far worse and far less reputable than we got this covered. <laughs> this comes from the biggest of trolls on YouTube, a guy named Doom Clown. Um, the worst of the worst. I'm so glad I don't know who this person is. Oh, you are lucky. He's a guy who just basically makes baseless claims on YouTube to get clicks. Uh, he is um, horrible, and he's got millions of subs. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. That's that's the key. So, that being said, and again, we said this is pure rumor, speculation, BS. Would any of you want him to come back, and what kind of project would you want to see him do? We'll start. I'd be all in. I'd be all in, but um, not right now. I, no, no, you know, yeah, but no. I mean, <laughs> how many Batman can you have? We got Michael Keaton coming back. We got Robert Pattinson coming back. Too many, too many Batman right now. I mean, another time, another place. Yes. Now, no. Okay. John. Mm, uh. Well, I, I, I don't know. I. Again, this is this is DC's issue with they they seem to be schizophrenic in, in <laughs> how they're how they're no seriously like they've got multiple personality disorder when it comes to managing the DC properties. So. Um, they, uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of agree with Joe. It's, it's just too many at the same time. It's like they, uh, one of the draws for, for geeks is, is continuity and, and a, you know, a larger storyline so, these days. I, I get, and I, I get if you want to make shorter storylines, but if you're doing three different Batman at the same time, it's like, eh, you're, you're kind of eating your own, um, your own prop, your profit, right? See, see, you don't realize the brilliance in what you just said, John, because I agree with you 100%. The fact that, <gasps> the fact that we're in the middle of the DCEU and then while that's going on, all of a sudden, 
here's a totally separate Batman trilogy we're working on with a different actor set in a different time. Oh, and here's a Joker movie that has nothing to do with anything else that's gone on and, yeah. and, and all this crazy stuff is going on. It's why a rumor like this is somewhat believable. Well, see, the I, I they're doing the job. The, the, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, no, I disagree no. because because the one thing is, ever since Walter Hamada took over uh, the DC universe, I feel that one of the they, they've 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 played their cards brilliantly. They've just played their cards brilliantly because they had a damaged brand and they had to repair it. Mm-hmm. And my God, have they ever! Like we got. Uh, um, Wonder Woman, then we got Aquaman, first DC movie that made a billion dollars. Uh, I don't know if we're counting Joker because that's sort of its own thing, but the Joker was so well received. And then we got uh, Shazam, which I, I don't know anyone who didn't like Shazam. Everybody loved Shazam. And then Birds of Prey came out, and it didn't make a lot at the box office, but it, it got really positive reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. So they, they had another critical hit on their hands. So they've, they've repaired this brand, and now we see them going forward. We've got James Gunn coming in. Uh, we've got another Patty Jenkins Wonder Woman. Now we hear uh, J- uh, Henry Cavill's coming back. We hear this stuff about Michael Keaton. And it just seems like they have done such a good job uh, fixing their ship that I can't believe they're then just going to go, Oh, uh, and yeah, we're going to throw this other crap on HBO Max just to confuse the viewers. Like, it's like, what? It, that, that doesn't, it's not consistent with anything else going on right now that they're doing. Yeah, I agree. Mm. And I think that uh, the Wheaton, the, um, all the Zack Snyder talk just, just, it gives oxygen to a needless fire. I don't think this is going to happen. I, I think it's just um, needless pontificating, to be quite honest with you. I don't think this is real. All right. Well, moving on to, other, to something else that, uh, that, is most likely not real. Um, there has been talk about, because Patty Jenkins, apparently her contract is up next year and, uh, it has come out that Disney isn't going to renew with her. Ugh. Uh, so not Patty Jenkins. Sorry. Who's the, uh, in charge of the star Wars stuff? Uh, Luke, Ka- Kathleen, Ken- oh, Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy. Kennedy. Thank oh. you. Oh, that's better. That, that, that Lucas and, <laughs> and Marvel aren't going to, to, to keep her around. Um, so now there's rumors flying and, uh, yeah, it, it's from some of these same kind of crazy sources. I understand, uh, that they're going to erase the sequel trilogy from canon, um, treat it as like a separate, like a Kelvin timeline kind of thing and, uh, move forward with more stuff like the Mandalorian. <laughs> It's the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I gotta Stupid. point out that this rumor also originated with uh, with the same YouTuber, Doom Clown. I call him Doom Clown. His actual name is Doom Cock, but he's such a joke. I, I just call him Doom Clown. Well, either one's bad. Uh, that's worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's worse. <laughs> but, like, I mean, I did like, see. You can't do that. Like that's something that's. I did see an interview with somebody who worked on the Disney stuff. Uh, with, with, on the Star Wars stuff and saying that, and he's close to, he knows Lucas and apparently Lucas wasn't happy with the, the trilogy, but he also sold Lucasfilm to Disney, so. Yeah. Right. He got his billions. He's right. good. Like, like this is something, how are you going to explain that to real people? Like people who don't follow, who don't know what words like continuity mean. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, the, the three Star Wars just came out. Oh yeah, those don't count anymore. Like, a real audience is going to say, "What? <laughs> huh? They're not going to get." <laughs> yeah, like, and the thing to remember, the thing to remember is Rise of Skywalker made over a billion dollars. The general public likes that movie. I mean, yeah, there's some angry fanboys online, mm-hmm. but but you know, the mom and pop taking their kids to the movie liked it just fine. That's- that's a question I've had from the beginning is like these people saying that, uh, that Rise of Skywalker and Last Jedi failed. And I'm like, they both made over a billion dollars. How is that a failure in any stretch of imagination? You know, just, no, but it made a couple of million. <laughs> well, that's like, if it just upsets a couple of nerds with YouTube channels and they get some talking, like I said, I get that. You got to have content, but I mean, like these things aren't real. Like they're, they're it's not going to happen. <laughs> They could ignore it. They ignore the holiday special. Like, that's, that's a possibility. They could just not talk about those characters again. But they're not going to erase it and redo those three movies, you know? 
That's dumb. But you don't ignore the holiday special. The holiday special ignores you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> mm. Try to ignore the holiday special. <laughs> Only in Russia. And, and what are you going to do? You're going to redo the trilogy now, and what are you going to call it? Like Star Wars Episode 7.5? Like, I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah. that's that's a brand that's new nightmare. Wait, wait. In, 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 in development, that's how we number our new versions of libraries. So, yeah. <laughs> 7.1, 7 7.2. Oh, we're coming out with a new major release, 8.0. Can, <laughs> can you imagine trying to get Harrison Ford back at this point? Yeah, I think he would. That guy would laugh at you and be like, yeah. no, "No, I think if you showed up at his house, even with a truckload of money, and said, come back and do Han Solo,' whoever that was would get punched in the face." He he right. only yeah. came back uh, for Episode Seven with two conditions: but number he one, they that he he got to die, mm -hmm. and number two, that they greenlight another Indiana Jones movie. Those were his conditions for coming back. He got both of what he wanted. What, what's I mean, they're still developing the next Indiana Jones. So what what's in it for him? Nothing. It's not going to happen. Like, it's just, this is just angry nerd wishful thinking. It's just, it's, it's silly. Like, it's absolutely silly. Now, they can make more Star Wars movies. They could do another trilogy that ignores this previous one. I'm not saying that couldn't happen. But then I could start episode 7.5 and 8.2. This is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Angry nerd wishful thinking. Uh, you may have. Why should copyright? Write that and make a website. <laughs> Start a boomers. <laughs> it's perfect. We can compete with you. We got this covered. <laughs> Did you guys know that Ryan Reynolds is going to be in the Justice League uh, Zack Snyder thing? Of course not. I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> As Green As Lantern. Deadpool. <laughs> As De uh. Deadpool. Yes. I'm going to Twitter. I got to. I got to build a Twitter page. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. You, 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 you got to understand. You're talking about Rowden Reynolds. If he heard about that, probably make it happen. He would try. To be quite honest, he would try to make that happen. I mean, they've already yeah. made references to the DC universe in the Marvel movies. So, <laughs> well, they referenced Deadpool a heck of a lot in Teen Titans Go to the Movies. They did. Oh my god! They did. Yes, they did. Technically, I came first. I don't know why he doesn't get confused for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. Such a great movie. Such a great movie. Uh, so, so we're saying there's you have no soul, John. There's no truth <laughs> to this uh, art. I mean, there's uh, you know, rumor. Huh. You should, I, you I'm know, gonna go with no. Yeah, I think we should. I think we're gonna start that as a new segment on this show. I'm gonna bring three rumors every week, and we're going to just. You know, which one's real? Which one's, or, or which one has any kind of real weight to it? <laughs> I would have fun with that. It would allow me just to go ape shit every week. Yes. It'd be fantastic. One of these things is I not like, like the other. The other. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Well, I think we. Hey Dave, you should do a social experiment. You should actually put some ridiculous because you have a lot. We have a lot of Twitter followers. Yeah. We should make up, like, and I'm going to say this on the show right now. We should completely make something up. Put it on the web, on the Twitter feed, and just see if we can create, like, a, a completely BS viral thing and laugh at people who retweet it. I like the way on you the think. show. Because I'm evil. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ah. All right. We'll have to, we'll have to, um, I'll have to think about that. What would be a good one? Yes. I want I want you. I want you to uh, go deep on this one. I've I have a conspiracy brain lately. I'll explain why in a couple minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the perfect place to put a pin in it for this week. Um. So first off, uh, Joe, thanks for joining us this week. Oh, thanks for having me. It was fun. Um. Again. Uh. So the the uh, it's the new Mega Podcastic uh, podcast. And uh, is that the YouTube channel? Is it new Mega Podcast? Uh. No. No, the YouTube channel's just Megapodtastic. Okay. Um, yeah. Now that, and, and I'll probably just change the podcast back to being Megapodtastic eventually, but uh, I don't know. I got a, I got a little fancy in my titling, so <laughs> eventually it won't be all new anymore. So no, that's true. Then you'll have to go to the uh, improved Megapodtastic. Yeah, the the yeah, old so new podcast. <laughs> so, so do you have any recommendation for the uh, listeners out there? Recommendations. Oh, let me see. I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, you, you know, there's um, there's a great show on Tubi TV, which is a free streaming service. So you just got to watch a couple ads. There's a great show that's uh, called um, uh, 
Being Quirky. And it's hosted by a former Philadelphia uh, newscaster named Don Pollock. So if you're in the Philadelphia area, you probably know who Don Pollock is. If you're not in the Philadelphia area, you can learn who he is. Just watch uh, Being Quirky on Tubi TV, and it's it's a lot of fun. Cool. Cool. All right. And make sure you guys check out Megapodtastic. Okay, John, uh, how about you? Any recommendations for the listeners this week? Uh, well, uh, as far as anime goes, uh, and here's a title for you, JD, God of High School. Um, it looks, I knew, it's, I know, hmm? know people like that. I know oh, people yeah. that think like that. Continue. Cool. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's basically an anime of just a single tournament arc, which in anime terms is just a lot of fighting and, uh, it's pretty cool. So, um, you know, it gets rid of, it looks like it gets rid of all the filler and just lets you see, watch the awesome fights. So, um, I, I, I heard it comes from other source material and it's, it crunchy roll is like bank rolling it, which is actually pretty interesting. So there, there's that. And, um, again, like I just caught up on the last two episodes of Stargirl and I cannot stress enough that you have to watch those. I will. I will. All right. I'm sorry. I'll get caught up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is really getting good. And they introduced, they, I don't, I don't, I don't want to spoil it, but they introduced a character that I have only ever seen, um, uh, in any, in any place else, uh, done well on the, um, the Bruce Tim universe in Justice League Unlimited. And uh, there, there, there's, there's another hero that you're going to see in the, in the last two episodes that, um, that is just, uh, it's really cool. So. Static shop? No, 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 no. <laughs> are, are you referring to the man with the mop? I don't want to give too yes, much. Yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, it's a, it's a character like between him and Desperado and the question. He's like one of those third string characters that I really, really like. And to see like when, when they brought him in, it was like, Oh my God. It was, we're just, you know, it, it I was just very pleased. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be interested to see what they do with him. Cool. And JD? Oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, Dave, I know, I know you listen to Ken Smith podcasts. Did you hear the most recent Fat Man uh, uh, Beyond? No, no, I, I'm, I'm behind okay. on that one. Okay, Mark Bernardin talked about this podcast that he was into. And so I went and I said, God, this sounds like something I would like. So, you guys are from the 80s. Are you familiar with the song Wind of Change from the Scorpions? Yes. Apparently, this podcast, also titled Wind of Change, delves into the question of whether or not this song was created by the CIA to act as propaganda to help spur on the fall of the the Soviet Union. You know, the sad thing is that is not the craziest conspiracy theory I've heard this year. Oh, my God. By far. No, but I mean, well, they actually, well, but they it's interesting. It's interesting. They, they back it up with the, the fact that they did it with Dr. Zhivago. Dr. Zhivago wasn't allowed to be printed in the USSR, so the CIA helped fund printing it in other countries and then literally, literally leaking it into Russia. So, I mean, this is this is part of what they do, but it seems so ridiculous. And I'm six episodes in, and it's it's crazy how it's possible. They're trying to figure out if there's reasonability to it. And I've come to like a secondary conspiracy saying, if this isn't possible, this is the CIA's way of leaking, you know, with the, the state, the current state of, of, of relations between the United States and Russia, it's the CIA's yeah. way of saying, we did this before, we'll do it again. And even if it's not real, it's planting those seeds of doubt. And it's such a good, crazy podcast. Oh my God. I highly what, recommend it. What, what podcast it's amazing. is this? It's absolutely you... amazing. Wind of Change, it's called. It's okay. amazing. And it's amazing. So, it's so well done. So the whole, the whole show, all the episodes is about this one song as propaganda. Not just that. Oh, okay. just, it's, it, it's that and it's the history. It's really examining whether or not this happened. Because supposedly the story is this dude was having dinner with a friend who has a friend in the CIA who happened to offhandedly remarked that, yeah, you know, Wind of Change from the, the Scorpions, that song was written by the, the CIA. And this guy was like, get the heck out of here. And, it, and it's his story to figure out is that this really happened. And the lengths of people... He, He's gone to interview and the entire conspiracy, because there's a crazy conspiracy web that spins out of this that includes like um, a, a rock manager who was doing 
doing work for Manuel Noriega and a, a, a giant concert in Moscow with all these Western metal bands that was actually the U.S. propping it up for, uh, for uh, um, I'm sorry for being a drug runner. Like, it's craziness, man. It's absolute craziness. But it's so crazy, you're like, I could see some of this actually happening. All, and even if it's not, I, I love a good crazy story. Yeah, all I know hmm. is in the behind the music, Scorpion's behind the music, uh, I can't think of his name, the lead singer, said he wrote well, the song when... Klaus Meine. I'm sorry? Yeah, Klaus Meine. Oh, yeah. He wrote the story when the Berlin Wall came down because he was inspired and he thought, that, you know, this was bringing in, uh, the world was changing and that inspired him. Yes, did you know... Yes, yeah, see, that's, that is the story. Did you also know that Klaus Meine did not write a single other song for the Scorpions? That's the only song that he wrote. The rest of the songs are written by the guitar player. Interesting. And well, it's, it's very not different than the entire rest of the catalog. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, it's. I said, even if it's not real, they're building up to an interview with Klaus Meine. It's fast. It's a fascinating listen. So even I highly if, recommend. Um, it's not in the same league. Like this sounds much more interesting. But <laughs> uh, if you also want to take another deep dive on a song, there's a documentary about who let the dogs out. It's <laughs> surprisingly it's interesting. Real? Yeah, really? I, apparently there's a big. Uh, a big thing on who wrote that song. About like 27 people claim they wrote that. Wow, you think most people would not claim to have written that one? But I guess <laughs> yeah, they made a lot right. of money. <laughs> uh, I actually yeah. want to watch that. That actually sounds really cool. I'll do some digging. Any uh, any new books come out this week, JD? This week, no. I got uh, I had to push back a release because um, some stuff going on with my uh, my proofreader. So I pushed back the new the next book to the end of the month. And okay. um, yeah, we're working on the new one hopefully gonna have a kickstarter up when we get settled into the new house and i, I don't have a million things on my plate so we're creating stuff i started a new book this week I'll go on good uh because you never stop mm. i can't if i'm trying to make this my living i gotta keep going oh this is true all right well i will recommend uh everyone to go to superheroespeak.com where you can find the podcast every week and comic book reviews by our good friend uh d squared there's actually one that was just put up today and uh, also, I am going to recommend the people check out the show Prop Masters on Disney+. Plus. A friend had recommended it to me, and I watched the first two episodes so far. The first one is uh, about Mary Poppins and how back in the 60s and when they made movies, they never saved props because they were just props. They didn't think anyone ever wanted them. So finding things from that is really hard uh, today. And a lot of that stuff gets put into the uh, Disney archives. The other second episode was all about Tron and how there aren't a lot of props from that movie because a lot of it was digital. I've never heard of this show. Is it any good? (laughs) Well, I'm recommending that people watch it. So there you go. (laughs) Obviously, you've seen it, Joe. Um, yes, I actually started with the Muppet movie episode because I'm a fanatic for the Muppets. So I, I, even though that was like the eighth episode, I started there and worked backwards. Yeah, I, it's it, it's it's fascinating because you learn not about just about the props, but about how they made the movies and and uh, the things that went into to it, and uh, you know what survived and what didn't survive. So yeah, it's it's a fascinating show. If if you're into Disney movies and props, I think people should check it out. So. All right, boys and girls. Well, on that note, that is where we'll end it for the week. So thanks for listening. And as always, don't let your cape be caught in the door. Have a good week.